everybody. Welcome to Catherine Sews. Thanks so much for joining me today. Today I want to take you to the next level of fashion and show you how you can draft your own patterns. I'm going to show you five basic skills that you need to know if you're going to be drafting your own patterns. I'm going to be focusing on skirts, but you can apply these techniques to other garments as well. Not that many people practice these skills anymore, as they are kind of all done on computer these days, but I think they're just precious and beautiful skills to know and excellent for home sewers or small designers, independent designers, and also in the school setting. I like to share these skills because I don't like to see them fall by the wayside. So there are a few things you're going to need to get started with drafting your own patterns. And the first thing is a basic block or a sloper. So a sloper or basic block, it's basically a fitting pattern. It's a pattern that fits you in, in a in a style that has no style. It's, this is the basic like pencil skirt pattern. You can purchase a fitting pattern and I'll link some down below. Maybe I'll put a picture right here and make it up in toile or muslin and then fit it to you. Alter the pattern so that you know that that fits you perfectly or for your client or whatever. Um, and then that's what you'll use as the basis for making any style that you want. Good. You can draft your own sloper if you wanted to really start from scratch. And it's not a ton of fun, but it's not that difficult. So if you ever want me to make a video on how to draft your own sloper, put a comment below and I'll be happy to do that. But for now, let's just start with a fitting pattern. For In my classroom, I have um, a sloper in size 2 to 22, and I have it made up in fabric so that my students can try it on and they know what, slide, what sloper to use. So that just takes that step out of the way for them. They don't have to worry about drafting their own sloper. It speeds up the process a lot. The other thing that you could use is this. This is what I would call the Bible of pattern drafting. It is by, by Helen Joseph Armstrong. Um, and this is an oldie but goodie. You can still get this on Amazon and it's, it's priceless. I've had this forever. One of my best students literally read it from cover to cover and it has like a million different styles of skirts in there a style of every kind of garment if you're going to buy one textbook on pattern drafting this is the one then you're going to need that sloper in mini version so that you can practice these skills on small paper without having to use the big pattern making paper good so a mini version of that but i'm going to show you what i do i'm just going to glue it to a cereal box so I get my students to glue it to the colored side of a cereal box. When you cut it out, it's plain on the back. Use your paper scissors, cut it out super accurately, and then poke a hole in the point of the dart. And then make that pinhole just a little bit bigger by poking a pen into it. Three other things you're gonna need are a sharp, pointy HB pencil, and then a see-through ruler like that. This one has um, metric and imperial on it, but if you work in inches, you just need the one with inches. They're actually easier to find. But you want to have it with that grid on there. Can you see that grid? That's what is so helpful with adding seam allowances. I'm going to show you that first. And then a curved ruler like this. So this is my hip curve. I don't like those big plastic French curves. They're not useful curves. I don't like those at all. This is what I make all curves with. That is very form curved ruler. And I, again, I've had this for centuries. Okay. And you need big pattern drafting paper. I've purchased pattern drafting paper from um, kind of like industrial paper supply places. So, uh, friends of mine have used medical kind of paper. You know, when you go to the doctor's office and it's on the examination table, you can buy rolls of those at a medical supply store. Um, and even Ikea has big rolls of paper. They're, the medical and the Ikea paper is not very wide, but I guess you can tape it together. I put all of my patterns that I'm going to be using repeatedly onto hard paper. It takes some time and this hard paper is not that cheap, but it's worth it if you want to be able to use patterns again and again. So it's it's a good investment. Okay, here we go. Getting to know your sloper, this is CF. That is the center front. This is the side seam over here. That's the waist, the waist start, and the hem. So understand that this is one quarter of the skirt and this is the center front. Okay, so this is the center front. It takes two of these to make the whole front. Skill number one. I'm going to show you how to add a decorative seam. It doesn't change the fit at all, um, and it doesn't really change the function at all. It's just a decorative seam where you could end up using two different fabrics or just have interesting seam lines. So this is the easiest. 
Um, all we're going to do is add a seam and then I'm going to show you the fastest way to add seam allowance to your new edges. Good? All right, buckle up. I would normally use a sharp pencil, but I'm going to switch to a sharpie so that you can see it better on the video. Okay, so we'll just trace the whole thing. Okay. So now let's say I want to add a decorative seam anywhere on here. Let's say I just want to um, have the lower part of the front in a different fabric. Now keep in mind this is the center front. So the skirt would open up, this line would pass through the center front, right? But if I'm doing it symmetrical, then I only need to use the quarter, right? I don't need to draft it out the whole front, right? Okay. But what I do need to keep in mind, if I want this line to pass smoothly through the front, I don't want a V going up or down, I want it to pass smoothly, then I need to have a right angle here. Same thing with the right angle there, if I want it to pass smoothly through the side seam. Good. Once I have that just roughed in, then I can take my hip curve and make a smooth line there. So I'm truing the lines, I'm making a nice smooth curve with my curve, my hip curve. Good. Okay, so that is now just a decorative seam. What I need to do is cut these two apart. I have to add seam allowance if I'm going to be sewing a seam there. Come apart now, make, keeping that right angle at the center front and ending at a right angle at the side seam. So these are my two new pattern pieces. I would call this upper front and lower front. They would both need their own grain line. This might be place on fold, place on fold. Before I cut them apart, it would be smart to put a notch across both. So I know when I sew them back together, that's the part, that's the spot that they need to join in. Good. Then I would tape them both on to new paper. Just tape those on and then add the seam allowance. Let me show you how to do that in full size. So if this is my curve, I've taped on new paper. And then whatever seam allowance you want to use, you're going to find that line on your see-through ruler. So if I'm going to use 5 8 or 1.5 centimeter seam allowance, then it's the 5 8 line I want to put on my line, my original line here. I have a thick line here. You would normally have a very fine pencil line, so you're being super accurate. And you would put that 5 8 line on top. It's easy where it's straight, right? This straight line, I've just got the 5 8 line right on top of that line. And because my line is thick, I'm going to slide it back a little bit just to be a little bit more accurate. Like that. Good. Now, as I draw, I can continue to draw as long as I'm parallel. As soon as my line is no longer on that line, then I have to pivot. I'm going to be pivoting around that curve like that. I can only draw where, when my 5 8 line is exactly on my new seam line. So I just keep pivoting and going around my curve like that. Nice and fast, right? It's way, way faster than you know, putting a lot of little dots right at the 5 8 mark. And then if my notch was here, I just extend that right out perpendicular to the seam. That would be my notch right there. Good. And then I would cut on this. So this is now my seam line. And this is now my cutting line. So that's the first skill. You just draw your line however you want it, wherever you want it. I would suggest not passing through a dart for your decorative seam because it just complicates everything. But really you can do that decorative, you could do a decorative seam kind of right there. True your line, cut it apart, add seam lines to both sides, have a notch where they're going to match, and then you can put interesting seam lines or different fabrics wherever you want. So that's skill number one, adding a decorative seam. Skill number two is adding a functional seam, a seam that actually is helping to do the shaping that the dart was doing. We're going to just in the same way start by tracing out that sloper exactly as it is, mark the dart exactly as it already is, and then we're just going to continue that dart down to the bottom of the skirt 
separate out the two pieces and basically making a princess seam that goes down the front of the skirt and that princess seam is going to do the shaping that the dart was doing. It just has a different look but the same function as the dart. Get it? Make sense? Okay, good. Let's go. I want to just continue down through the middle of the dart all the way to the bottom. So the center of my dart is right there. I'm going to continue a line right through there, passing through the point of the dart and directly to the bottom of the skirt. Good. This panel from that side of the dart, this is my center front panel. This side front. So where the dart originally was is now just gone. That's just an empty void in between the two pattern pieces. Good. Place on fold. So that is going to open out. This side front though will be cut to. Same thing again now. We're going to be cutting these out and adding seam allowance to both sides. So the center front, I follow that arm of the dart. The side front, I follow the other arm of the dart. Good. Be clear. So when you sew those together, that that space in between does the same shaping that the dart would have. Good. So that's just creating the princess seam down the front of the skirt. Easy peasy, right? Good. Good. So pretty easy so far, right? Adding the decorative seam is pretty easy. You're just drawing your line, cutting them apart, adding seam allowances to both. Adding the functional seam, you are kind of replacing a dart with a seam, so that dart needs to be reflected in your two new seam lines. That space in between your new pattern pieces was where the dart was. So you're going to end up with the exact same fit, exact same shape as if as your original sloper or as your original fitting pattern was creating. Okay, so we haven't changed the the actual outline of the skirt or the fit of the skirt. It's all the same. Skill number three now is closing up a dart. When you close the dart, that fullness that you're taking away ends up spreading out somewhere else in the pattern piece. For, so for a skirt, that's one really nice way to add fullness to the bottom edge of the skirt. Easy peasy. When we're looking at this skill in a bodice, you can move that dart around anywhere around the perimeter of the, of the bodice. So you can close it in one place, open it somewhere else. Um, but today, just focusing on the skirt, I'm just going to show you how to close up the dart to create an A-line skirt. If that fitting pattern skirt fits you, it's still going to fit you after you move the dart, as long as you do it properly. So let me show you how. We are getting a little bit more complicated here, but don't worry, it's not too bad. I'm going to start tracing at this arm of the dart, the side closer to the center front. Start tracing there and come down a little bit in about a third of the way across. Now, this is the tricky part, so watch this. I'm going to put the point of my pen right at that dart, at the point of the dart. Now, you see, I can close that up. Good. So, what I'm doing is bringing this arm of the dart over to where this one is now sitting. Watch that again. The point of my pen has to go at the point of the dart. Take this arm, bring it to that point, just like that. Good. Now when I trace the rest of the skirt out, now I've got an A-line skirt. That dart is completely gone. We don't need that point anymore. We don't need that notch anymore. We can just finish off the curve at the bottom. And there you've got just a super simple, basic A-line skirt that fits you perfectly. If the original pattern fit you perfectly, so will this. It's the exact same size and fit. And this one we can also add our green line. That one can also be placed on fold. Or if you wanted, you could extend that out and create a placket for buttons going down the front of the skirt. Or you could do it cut too and do an exposed zipper all the way down the front of the skirt. If you want more fullness, see where the curve comes down? I can easily just continue that straight down and that could be my new side seam now here at the bottom edge remember what i was saying about a right angle if you want it to not be a v at the side 
we need the same thing here. We have to have a right angle here. Okay, that has to be a right angle. Otherwise, it's going to be a point or a V at your side seam. And then I can blend that in to my original, to my original script length. So now this would be removed. And then you've got an A line with quite a bit more swing to it. Very nice, right? Okay, good. One other way you can remove the dart. Let's say that, remember that decorative seam I was showing you? Let's say that that decorative seam did pass right through the point of the dart. Let me just cut that out. If we did pass that seam right through the end of the dart, you can just get rid of that dart entirely simply by folding or taping out that paper. So if I bring this arm of the dart to the other one, I can tape it out and now this top part of the skirt, the yoke, has no dart. I would add seam allowance to this bottom edge here and that would be a yoke pattern piece. This this would not be there, that was just my scribbling from before. But that's a beautiful technique, but it only works if you're passing through the point of the dart. Good, so that's two ways you can close up a dart. And again, we're not changing the fit. We did change the shape of the skirt there, but we didn't change the fit. It still would fit exactly the same around the waist, and it would have that extra fullness um, from the waist down. No extra fullness has been added to the waist yet, but let me show you how to do that. So skill number four is adding fullness. And there's actually three different ways I'm gonna show you how to add fullness, but they all use a technique called slash and spread. So let's say that the fullness we added by closing up the dart and even extending out our side seam there, let's say that that is still not enough fullness for the design you wanna make. We're gonna slash this piece, but we're gonna leave a little bridge closed at the top. You can do more slashes, let's say into four. Okay. I have that divided evenly into four, and now down here, divide that evenly into four, and then connect. Um, you can do more slashes if you want. Good. So now I'm gonna cut on those slash lines, but I'm gonna leave a little bridge connecting at the top. Very little, so it's just holding the paper together, but I'm still going to be able to move these pieces apart separately. The first way we can add fullness is called radiating fullness, where I'm going to be adding fullness just at the bottom edge only. So depending on how much I want to add, I can just spread it out as much as I want. I would tape this down with the same amount of fullness in between each of those panels, okay? So if I tape it down like that onto new paper, this becomes my whole pattern piece. There's no actual seams in here at all. It's just one very large full skirt with no extra fullness at the waistline, good? These are not seams and they're not separate panels. Sometimes my students get confused with that. Right, this is now one big pattern piece, good? So that's radiating, where we're adding nothing at the top and these kind of rays come down, good. Okay, the second is called unequal fullness. Now this time I do wanna snip these all the way apart because let's say we do want fullness added at the waist. We want it to be gathered into the waist. So then I can add it with an unequal amount at the top and bottom. So I might add two inches in each of those. I might add four or six inches in each of these. So I'm adding some at the top, which would be gathering, and I'm adding more at the bottom. So here you'd have like a ball gown skirt, you know, a little bit of gathering at the top, very full at the bottom. Good. So that's unequal fullness. Do you remember when we had this? Okay, when we had these two together, and we just created a lower front. We had a decorative seam in there. That's right from the first scale, that decorative seam. I could take this lower front and add fullness to it so that it would gather, either just flare out with no gathers with the radiating fullness, or I could add out, add in the unequal fullness so that it flares and gathers, okay? So I could slash and spread this lower portion here to make a really beautiful skirt design, okay? So, 
I'm going to show you the third equal fullness on this little lower front piece. So first I'm going to divide it. On my new paper, I just want to give myself a right angle here. And then I can take this lower front piece and again, I could either leave that little bridge at the top. So if I leave that bridge at the top, I can just flare this out, right? That notch will still be helpful. It'll still sew to the same place on the upper part of the skirt. We're not changing this measurement at all. We're only changing the measurement of the bottom. So it would not gather there. It would sew in smoothly, but flare out here at the bottom. So that would be radiating fullness on that lower front piece. Now I could do the unequal fullness as well. I would just snip those all apart. And I could add some fullness at the top. It would gather in a bit, but it would still flare. So it would be gathered and flared. That's that second way of adding fullness, which is the unequal. These are equal and these are equal to each other, but you're adding more to the bottom than the top. Make sense? Okay. Now, equal fullness is like this. We would be just sliding them out, maintaining this bottom line here. So I would spread these all out evenly. Okay. And then I've got this funny shape here. If we want this to gather in, we would have to smooth out this line where I would be splitting the difference. I'd be finding the center of this, the center of this, the center of this, the center of this, and blending that line together and create one smooth line to blend those all together. Okay, and that would gather in, so it wouldn't flare, it would gather and then fall straight. If I wanted to put this in as pleats, okay, this is the first time we're talking about pleats, I would keep these exact steps in. I'm gonna cut this out and fold it. I would have done this all mathematically, like adding in exactly the same amount, but then the process is the same. I'm gonna fold it there, bring that edge together back where it used to be. There we go. So I've got it all folded back how it was. Okay, and you can see that that's now returned to the same size that it was. And now when I cut that open, now we've got these peaks and valleys of how that would have to pleat back together. You'd put a notch on either side of the pleat. This is gonna fold over to here. This is gonna fold to here. This is gonna fold to here. And because we cut it when it was folded, then we have the proper like peaks and valleys so that it can all go back together and create that smooth line. Make sense? Very good. By following the pink line that we drew, it already is one smooth line and we would gather it and not pleat it. You see the difference? Very good. That, that was the most complicated one, wasn't it? First two were the easiest, then closing up the dart, not too bad. Adding fullness, you're now getting into so many different options of what you can do. It does become a little bit more complicated, right? But once you understand those concepts, the whole world of pattern drafting opens up to you. The last skill I'm going to show you is the easiest. All the skirts we've been talking about so far are symmetrical. We've been working on a quarter panel of the skirt. And so when you open it up, you would just get a mirror image of whatever you created. So now what if you don't want your skirt to be symmetrical? Easy peasy. Let me show you. If your skirt is not symmetrical, you're going to trace out your sloper. And then we're gonna flip it. You have you now your whole entire front. Good. 
Good, so now you can do any one of those techniques onto this full piece, right? You could add a decorative seam that's asymmetrical. You could do whatever you wanted to make this asymmetrical. You could do a yoke like we showed, but just have it asymmetrical. Any one of the first four techniques that I showed you can now be applied to this full front piece or back piece, good. Those are the five main techniques you need to open up the entire world of pattern drafting to really almost any design that you can think of, you can now make using those five techniques. Having those skills is just, it just opens up so many possibilities for you. So I hope you had fun with that. Hope you learned something. And if you did, if you learned something, you gotta hit that subscribe button for me. Thanks so much for supporting the channel. It means the world to me. I'll see you next time on Catherine Sews. Take care.